H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. Thanks for watching the video. See, in this particular video, we'll learn about functions. So we'll see why functions are needed, what are functions, uh, what are the different ways through which we can create functions, and how we can create parameter-based functions, how we can create functions without parameters, how we can create functions with different return types. Uh, generally, functions can be present inside the Java language and those are called as Java language based function or also in other words we can call it as, as inbuilt functions of the Java language. Similarly, we can create our own functions too. So when we create our own functions, those functions are known as use, user built functions or user defined functions. So there are two kinds of functions. Some functions are part of the Java language. They are called as inbuilt functions of the Java language. Certain functions can be made by us. Those functions are called as user defined functions. So let's go ahead and understand about functions. Now what's a function by itself? If we go to the definition of function, it means it is a collection of statements or the rather a collection of codes or uh, set of codes that are grouped together to perform an operation. Now, for example, let's say I have an application with four modules and in two modules, I need to add two numbers. So either, either I can create separate codes to add these two numbers in the individual models, or I can create a simple function, which is for addition of two numbers. And I can call that particular function inside those two models in which we have to add two numbers. So in other words, what is going to happen if we create a function, it is going to save our time and mental agony. If you do not use functions, we have to individual write codes in the individual models and that is going to take a lot of time and mental agony. That is why functions are important because it saves us from repetitive codes. Now, this is a typical example of a println function or a println method. A function can be also called as a method. We can call a method as a function or a function as a method. This is a typical example of a SOP, that is the println command or the println method or the println function. And this function basically does what? It executes several statements or other lot of uh, it executes a lot of codes in order to display the message or the result of that particular set of codes on the console of Eclipse or on the console of the Java environment. So this is what a function does. So this particular function println is an inbuilt function method of the print stream class. And the same println function or the method is part of your system class too. Okay. And this println method or function can be used to execute set of codes in order to display the result of those set of codes in the console of the Eclipse. Now that's the example of function. Go to the next slide. Now, what are functions? Functions have the same hierarchy. That means we cannot create a function inside another function. Let's understand that very, very frankly, that if we try to create a function inside another function, the compiler is going to show syntax error. And that is why we say that functions are to be made independent of each other. We will understand this particular uh, stuff when we actually look at the practical examples. Now, what do you mean by independence, independency of functions? It, if we can further elaborate it, it means that we cannot create functions inside another function. That is, that is what I was trying to say. The third part says that functions should be created within the class body or the body of the class file. You cannot create a function outside of the 
class body. If we try to create a function outside of the class body, the compiler is going to show a syntax error. So what is function? Function is nothing but a set of codes which perform a particular activity. And this set of codes will be part of the function which can be reusable into nature wherever required. So definitely functions helps us to save time. It reduces the number of codes because we don't have to repeat we don't have to repeat the same codes again and again and it can be called repeatedly when required now as we have seen that there are two kinds of function uh, inbuilt functions of java language and there's a user defined function which we create ourselves when we want to get the result of a user defined function it has to be called inside the main method the main method is an inbuilt function of the Java language and the usage of the main method is to bring the control inside it. Bringing the control inside it means that the codes that are written within the body of the main method will be executed and the result will be seen in the console of Eclipse. So if we want to get a result of a user defined functions, we have to call that user defined functions inside the main method. If we do not call a user defined function inside the main method, we will not get the result of that user defined function. Now, by the way, main method is an inbuilt method or function of the Java language. So let's go forward and understand the syntax of a function without parameters. So this is a syntax of functions without parameters. So this is a typical example in which the function name is defined. The function name, if you can see, is named as addition function. A function is always followed by a parenthesis. There is a pair of parentheses out here. The function should have the return type. In this particular example, the return type is void. We can have other return types also. For example, integer return type or float return type or double return type or long return type or character return type or string return type or boolean return type. Right now in this function, the return type is void and the function name is addition. A function can be static or non-static. If it is a static function, we have to define it with the keyword called static. If it is a non-static function, there is no keyword for it. Similarly, a function can have uh, access specifiers like public. Right now in this particular addition function, the access specifier used is public. We cannot, we can have other access specifiers like default, protected and private. The keywords used for public, protected and private are same as what is defined. So a public function will have the public keyword. The protected function will have the protected keyword and the private function will have the private keyword. A default function does not have a keyword. See, if I do not define any access specifier by default, it means it is a default function. Right now, in this particular example, the function name is addition, having a return type as void. It is a static function because for static, we need to define the static keyword. And it's a public access specifier based function. Now, coming to understand it and remember it, if you look at this, Public static is nothing but an access modifier or an access specifier out here. Okay. And we have discussed that a function can be static and non-static. For non-static, there is no keyword. For static, the keyword static has to be used. A function can be public, protected, private or default. For default, there is no keyword. For public, uh, it is a public keyword. For private, it is a private keyword. For protected, it is a protected base keyword used. So this public static is nothing but the access modifier then we have the void it is nothing but the return type of the function our function should have return type it is compulsory that the function has a return type right now the return type is void we will have different return types also as we have discussed earlier addition followed by the parenthesis if you see out here the function name is addition and it is followed by a parenthesis then we have the parameters right now this function that is the function name is addition does not have any parameter so parameters is defined inside the parenthesis so this is the parenthesis which is followed by the function name this parenthesis so inside this parameter parenthesis we have to define the parameters so if you do not define the parameters then it is called a function without parameters 
and this curly brace the, this is called the opening curly brace this is called the closing curly brace so within this opening and closing curly brace we have to define the body of the function so this is nothing but the body of the function okay and in this body of the function we have to define group of statements or group of codes or set of codes for that particular function so opening and cl closing curly braces depicts the body of the function where statements of code need to be defined now further on whatever we have discussed i have put it as part of points function can have the following access modifiers public private default protected each access modifier have the same keyword that means the public will have the public keyword private will have the private keyword protected will have the protected keyword except default no keyword for default it is compulsory that we need to define the access modifier for the function function can be static or non static static will have the static keyword non static function there is no keyword it is compulsory that we need to define a function as a static or a non static function similarly function it is necessary that the function has the return type right now in the above example the return type is void there are other return types for the function other return types are void in, uh, integer float long boolean car and string also which i have forgotten except void all return types should use the return statement inside the body of the function right now in this particular example the addition function has a void return type now if we use any other return type apart from void we need to use the return statement inside the body of the function and it is compulsory to define the return statement okay now what do you mean by void void means an empty return type that means this function will not return anything so when it is a empty return type it can return a result which can be in integer format it can return a result which can be in long format it can return a result which can be in float format it can return a result which can be in boolean format it can return a result which can be in string format it can return a result which can be in character format so a void return type function means a function which has a empty return type or with no return so if it is a empty return type it can return any kind of data or it, it can return any type of value the values can be in integer format or float format or long format or boolean format or car format or string format okay so for a void return type function we don't have to use the keyword called return in the body of the function but if we have another other return types apart from void we need to use the return statement inside the body of the function and what it, it what is what is it going to return so when we use the return statement out here inside the body of the function when we use a non void return type it is going to return the kind of returns that we have defined so let's say we have defined integer return type so the return statement should return a integer value if we define a function as boolean return type the return statement should return a boolean value if we give a return as double return type for the addition function it should return a double value that is what you mean by return statement we'll see this example and when we see the example for the return types we'll be able to understand it in a much better manner coming to the next slide this is a syntax of a function with parameters this is a typical example if you see out here this is where the parameters are defined within the parenthesis of the addition function now as we have seen that a function is always followed by a pair of parenthesis and within the parenthesis you define the parameters parameters can be also called as arguments so in this addition function there are two parameters which are which are of string type and the parameter variables are p1 and p2 so i can have n number of parameters inside the parenthesis of the addition function there is no rule that i need to have specific number of parameters parameters can be of any type of any number okay and parameters are also called as arguments should be al always defined within the parenthesis followed after the function name so let us understand this in a much better manner if you look at this particular example it has a public static access modifier the return type is void 
the function name is addition which is followed by the parenthesis and then it has parameters inside the parenthesis okay and these parameters and these parameters are of string type both the there are two parameters both the parameters are of string type having the variables p1 and p2 and the function parenthesis is followed by a opening curly brace and a closing curly curly brace it is within the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace that, that we define the codes for the function and p1 and p2 are nothing but parameter arguments of the function which are of string type we can have other types of parameters it can be integer type parameters it can be a combination of integer double float parameters also so we can have n number of parameters and different types of parameters so wrapping it up function can have n number of parameters parameters can be of string type or any other data type any other data type means integer type float type long type double type boolean type character type or string type parameters based function increases the dynamic usage of the functions inside code so in comparison to functions without parameters functions with parameters increases the dynamic behavior of the functions functions can have the same name but should have different parameter types so you can have another function with the same name addition but the parameter type should be different if you look at this particular function this has two parameters of string type i can have another function with the same name called addition but the parameter type should be different so this is this concept of having different parameter types with the same name of the function is called as the overloading concept and this overloading concept is a concept of polymorphism which is a concept of your object oriented programming we will see this at a later point of time but let me tell you for your knowledge functions can have same name the only requirement is that it should have different parameter types if if we, we have a function with same parameter types if we have two functions with same parameter types the compiler will show a syntax error that is why you can have function with same name but the parameter types of the function should be different and this is allowed because of the concept of overloading and overloading is a concept of polymorphism we look at polymorphism at a later point of time but this is just for your reference and knowledge so that's about it that's about your functions and the theoretical knowledge of the function thanks for watching it please give it a give it the feedback that is wanted appreciate thanks very much